the North Sea, 120 miles northeast of Aberdeen, blocks 15, 17, Piper and Saltire. The location for some of the most innovative advances in platform technology. This is the story of Piper B and Saltire A. The two platforms are the latest additions to a complex that supplies around 15% of Britain's energy needs, delivering gas to the St. Fergus terminal and oil to the terminal at Flotter. The platform's operator is Elf Enterprise Caledonia Limited, which heads a consortium including Texaco Britain Limited, Lasmo North Sea PLC and Union Texas Petroleum Limited. The whole story of the design, construction, commissioning, installation and hookup of Piper B and Saltire A is a perfect example of how individuals and companies have cooperated to bring together the component parts of the first of this new generation of offshore platforms. In January 1990, Piper B's subsea template was installed over 145 meters under the surface on the seabed. This meant that as the other elements of the structure were being prepared, wells could be pre-drilled through its nine slots. The eight-legged 23,000 ton jacket on which the topsides would sit took two years to complete and was floated out from the Murray Firth in September 1991. Launched from its barge and positioned over the template. When it was secured in place and all of the surrounding pipelines had been installed, it was ready to receive the first of the topside structures. The 11,800 ton process utilities and integrated deck module which would have to be lifted 23 meters above the sea surface in order to set it in place. It's the size of a 12-story office block and was built in Newcastle. This was to be a world record lift, so the timing and weather conditions were critical. Saturday, the 7th of December, 1991. Conditions are ideal. The 270 sea fastenings are cut. The 14-inch thick steel slings are suspended from the hooks of the heavy lift barge, DB-102. Its two 6,000-ton cranes take the strain, and 430 crew on six vessels combine to achieve the record lift. The next lift was the 3,100-ton accommodation module. Built in Middlesbrough, it provides accommodation and recreational facilities for 180 workers. Hookup, which started as soon as the first module had been lifted into place, would need an offshore crew of over 1,300 individuals, who during the next 12 months would work more than 4 million man-hours. This meant that Elf Enterprise Caledonia's already busy heliport would see its monthly passenger throughput double to four and a half thousand and would need an extra 60 flights a week to transport them. The 4,600 ton compression module was installed in February 1992 and two months later the 8,300 ton Wellby module and drilling support substructure completed the topsides facilities. Their total operating weight is over 27,000 tons. Piper B was the first offshore platform to be designed to the internationally recognized standard BS5750, a standard which was also applied to its sister platform, Saltire A. The Saltire field was discovered in 1988, and government permission to develop it came in January 1991. Saltire A has benefited in many ways from the project management experience gained through the development of Piper B. It is, however, a different concept. 
Its production is handled and will eventually be controlled by Piper B. Its four-legged jacket weighs 15,400 tons. In September 1992, the lift of its 11,400 ton integrated deck module was the second largest crane lift in history. When all the topsides have been added, the total topsides weight reached 14,600 tons. Saltire A is seven kilometers southeast of Piper B and has 24 well slots. During the drilling phase of operations, it'll be manned by a crew of up to 81 people. After that, it'll be possible for the platform's production and processes to be remotely controlled from Piper B. The two control rooms are linked by optical fiber control cables, a form of technology which uses pulses of light to deliver data. In every area, Piper B and Saltire A are breaking new ground. May 1992 saw another record set. This time it concerned the launch, tow-out and installation of two pipeline bundles. They were constructed in Wick and the interfield bundle to link Piper B and Saltire A was the largest and longest in the world. 6.7 kilometers long and over a meter in diameter. Its four lines take Saltire A's oil and gas to Piper B and provide gas lift and water injection in the other direction. The second bundle, the infield bundle, carries water injection lines and hydraulic control umbilicals from the Saltire platform to a subsea wellhead protection unit. These fields have precious reserves which will supply markets for years to come. Records have been broken to put these two new platforms in place. In Piper B and Saltire A, new thinking, new designs and many months of dedication, commitment and teamwork have created two powerful additions to North Sea production. The next generation is here. to produce oil efficiently and safely. But it would be nice to think that uh, the standards that we, we have achieved and will achieve will be important to the rest of the North Sea industry. We, we recognize that. We recognize that Piper B is important for the self-esteem and self-respect of the North Sea industry. We intend to achieve operational standards that will be a flagship for the rest of the North Sea. Well, for time goes, I we provide the service for the whole area, which is uh, from range uh, 80 miles from Aberdeen up to range 120. And this is known as the Piper Traffic Area. My responsibilities are to take charge of the chopper when it's approaching uh, the platform, uh, responsible for passengers, responsible for the helicopter crew, uh, and everything regarding chopper activities. Well, this obviously is the administration office here for the platform. We look after all the logistics of people coming and going, um, their welfare, I suppose, while they're on board, cabin allocations. We also do administrative support for the whole platform, secretarial functions, taking minutes of meetings. There's over 170 million barrels of oil and some 14 billion cubic feet of gas remaining in the Piper Reservoir. Recovering and processing those reserves calls for many different skills and disciplines. First, the wells have to be drilled. Basically, the drilling crew's job is to drill a hole down to the reservoir some 10,000 feet below. This is done using a drill bit 
attached to lengths of pipe which form the drill string. The pipe is rotated on the surface, thus rotating the drill bit so it cuts into the rock. The crew also monitor the pressures and conditions in the well and the drill pipe. As they go deeper, they line the hole they've created with steel casing. Drilling fluid, usually called mud, is pumped down through the drill strings to the bit. This helps to keep it cool and also, as it's pumped back up to the rig, it brings back the rock debris which the bit has created as it rotates, cutting through the formation. Eight wells were pre-drilled through the subsea template. When they're tied into Piper B's production facilities, their reserves start to arrive for processing and the crew can turn their attention to drilling new wells. We're very lucky on the Piper B because we've got some very up-to-date equipment. It's all computerized. It gives me a, a constant readout of volumes. I can keep track of all the uh, mud system when we're actually in drilling. And I can program it so if we have a loss or gain, I can see immediately if, uh, if there's anything happening in the well that shouldn't. The mud pumps are fairly large units. They're capable of pumping at about 5,000 pounds per square inch. And they're powered by up to 3,000 horsepower. The whole concept of the, the Piper is different. It's been laid out for safety, access, and the size, the available room. It's far larger than anything I've experienced for a drilling rig before. The object of all this, of course, is to recover the well's reserves. Pressure in the reservoir, known as formation pressure, pushes the oil and gas up the borehole towards the platform. Once it arrives, it has to be processed before it can be sent on to the mainland. That's the responsibility of operations. I'm operations superintendent on the platform and my team are responsible for the oil production, processing, the gas export um, and the utilities on the platform. The first stage of processing involves treating the fluids which come from the reservoir as we take the fluids on board, we put them into a large vessel and reduce the pressure. It's a bit like taking the top off a lemonade bottle and letting it fizz. The gas rises to the top and reducts it away for processing. The water being heavier than oil falls to the bottom and once again it's taken away for processing. The oil is then passed through a highly accurate metering skid before shipment via mainline pumps to the pipeline and uh, flutter terminal in Orkney. The gas which leaves the separator is a very heavy gas. It contains uh, butane and propane. It also contains a lot of water. Uh, both the heavier gases and the water must be removed before we export the gas. So we put it through a series of compressors and at each stage we compress and we cool. This knocks out butane, propane uh, in a liquid form and we can then re-inject those into the oil stream leaving the platform. The water is removed in molecular sieves uh, the water is taken out to prevent freezing during processing and also corrosion in the pipeline itself. The gas which leaves the platform is essentially methane, the domestic gas that you would get from your gas cooker. At peak production, the Piper Reservoir will produce something like 100,000 barrels a day of water. That's equivalent to about 16,000 tonnes. This is to be uh, cleaned up to the government standard before we discharge it to the sea. The government standard is 40 parts per million oil and water. We pass the water from the separators through hydrocyclones. These are devices which make use of the fact that water is heavier than oil. It spins the water at high speed and we can extract the remaining oil. As well as treating the fluids their wells and those of Saltire A are producing, the operations team have to make sure there's enough pressure in the formations to keep the oil flowing. There are a number of means of, of assisting oil production from a, a low pressure reservoir. One of them is to inject gas into the well. If you inject it low enough into the well, the gas bubbles upwards and lightens the column and basically assists the oil to flow to surface. So we export gas to Salter for gas lift and we also have the facility to gas lift piper wells. As you remove fluids from the, from the reservoir, the reservoir pressure, the, the force that drives the oil to surface will decay. Uh, gas lift is one way of dealing with it. The other and standard way on all North Sea fields is to inject water into the formation. 
a large part of our processing facilities are devoted to uh, cleaning seawater to a sufficient standard that we can inject it into the, the reservoir. Um, if you leave particles in it, they will inevitably block the pores in the sandstone and uh, block up the injection well as opposed to the oil production well. While the operations team monitor and control the production processes on Piper B, there's a maintenance team which makes sure that their plant and equipment keep on functioning efficiently. My job in, involves coordinating activities all of the maintenance department. We're responsible for keeping the production equipment uh, operating in a safe and efficient manner and ensuring that the facil facilities are available when required to maximise the production of oil. How we operate here, we have what we call system operators and they are looking after the oil producing system or the gas side of things. They take care on a day to day basis, monitoring all the parameters, temperatures, etc. Uh, if they notice faults or areas that give them concern, they would refer them back through the maintenance department for further investigation. In the control room, to help us with the monitoring of the process systems, we have VDUs at, our, uh, at hand to monitor process, utility and fire and gas systems. Also, we have communications panel here. We have the August fire and gas panel and ESD panels and the subsequent mimics above where we can be directed to a subsequent alarm or check on running plant. We monitor control the oil and gas and water facilities on Piper Bay. That's the import from Salt Tire, Chanter, and the subsequent export to Flotter. We can start, stop, control the process from start to finish. In addition to the oil processing facilities, we've also got to consider that this is essentially a, a small town on legs, and we have to have all the facilities that you would have in a small town. We have the capability of generating 27 megawatts from each of our four John Brown generators. We have potable water making capacity of 60 tonnes a day from each of our two units to minimise the amount of potable water we have to bring in by supply boat. We also have all the other bits and pieces like sewage treatment plants that you'd expect in a town. So it's a small town, it's a process plant, it's a drilling platform and yet the job of being in charge of it all has been compared to that of a ship's captain. The correct title is Offshore Installation Manager, the OIM. How does he sum up his job? I'm responsible for the health, welfare and safety of all the personnel, installations and vessels within the 500 metre zone that surrounds Piper Bay. Being such a, a multidisciplinary environment, it's essential that we maintain communications at all levels. As such, uh, a typical day can be taken up a great deal with meetings whereby we decide what our short-term work objectives are and our long-term work objectives are. The rest of the day will be taken up with queries on safety issues, procedure issues, and essentially trying to keep the folks safe, informed, and happy. We work a uh, seven to seven normal day, seven in the morning to seven in the evening, or seven in the evening to seven in the morning. Uh, it doesn't tend to work out like that for the supervision. It's a 24 hour operation. Despite its distance from the shore, the platform is by no means isolated. Communication is vital in any successful operation, and the OIM and his staff are continually in touch with the ELF Enterprise offices. It's important for us to keep the communication going on the beach. The technical support and engineering all comes from the beach. And information is exchanged at all levels, as a matter of course. So we have uh, communication meetings in the morning and in the evening. They're attended by the supervision on the platform, mainly drilling, operations, maintenance and safety. Safety is one aspect of life on Piper B which has received particular attention. I think safety has always been paramount in offshore operations. Uh, the bulk of my job inevitably will be involved in, in the safe operation of the process facilities. If you consider that you're taking oil out of the ground, separating the gas and compressing it to some 180 bar, it is inherently dangerous. My job essentially is to make sure that everything we do is safe. And it's, you, cannot, you cannot divorce safety from the job. Safety is the job. I think we've got a very safe platform here. The fire and gas facilities are second to none. 
Uh, the process facilities are second to none, and I believe that my operations team are outstanding. Second to none is the right expression, because in terms of safety, Piper B has been designed and constructed like no other platform before it. The drilling, process and compression modules are as far as they can be from the accommodation. The non-hazardous utilities module acts as a further shield between the two. And the risers which carry the oil and gas are also at the opposite end of the platform to the living quarters. Fire and blast walls separate the modules from one another to provide even more protection. And all critical stairways are also heat shielded where necessary and designed to provide protection for at least one hour in an emergency. People's general attitude to safety is that they're far more aware. Um, certainly in Piper B, the uh, technology that's been built into the design and the up-to-date requirements, i.e. fire and gas systems, shutdown systems, etc., is uh, paramount importance to the company and is uh, very well designed. The accommodation is a temporary safe refuge, TSR. It's completely enclosed and pressurized and designed to provide protection for up to 180 people for at least two hours. From here, they can get to their lifeboats without ever needing to come into contact with the outside atmosphere. Escape routes from the platform itself are all geared to the TSR, the temporary safe refuge, and that is itself the safe haven. The emergency procedures are that whenever a, an alarm situation on the platform is enunciated, then personnel will make their way to the safe haven of the platform. There's more protection provided by a comprehensive system of emergency shutdown valves. They've been fitted both on the seabed and on the top sides and will automatically close off the supply of hydrocarbons in any emergency. The process, drilling and safety engineering on Piper B is superb. However, if we cannot maintain the safety culture that we've generated, then ultimately the engineering does not matter. Safety relies on the people. We have to get involved in safety and we have safety meetings once a trip, which, you know, if you have anything to bring up, you bring it up. There's also your safety rep, which you can go to any time if you have a problem, no matter how small it is, and just let them know what's going on. We patrol the platform at the moment and uh, we carry out safety audits. During our uh, tour of the platform, we're, we're looking out for any uh, abnormalities regarding safety aspects, advising the personnel on the platform of the, the correct and safe way to, to do their work. This is yet another innovation. Piper B is the first UK platform designed to have free fall lifeboats. Crews are trained to use them at the Robert Gordon's Institute of Technology facility in Dundee, which the ELF Enterprise Consortium helped to set up in 1991. They're located at each end of the platform. Access to them from the TSR is safe and easy and the ramps from which they're launched are fully heat shielded. If you're going to have to leave a platform, the Verhoff boats are certainly the best way to go. And I have no hesitation in, in leaving the platform, even in fairly bad sea conditions in one of these boats. Terrific. All over the platform, there are other examples of the attention that's been paid to safety. Kickover life rafts and donuts offer a secondary means of emergency escape. And throughout the living quarters and in other key areas, there are personal emergency kits, each with a light stick, gloves, smoke hood and torch. As you'd expect, computerized control systems figure very largely on Piper B. These combine the most sophisticated monitoring and recording procedures with the capacity to start, stop and regulate all rotating equipment from the central control room. This control room, though, is onshore in Aberdeen. 
It's an exact replica of Piper Bees, and crews can train here and get experience before actually working on the platform. As well as refining their skills in monitoring production, they can also practice emergency response procedures. All of these operations generate data, information, and all sorts of other communications. There's a complex network of telephones, telex, radio and satellite systems to cope with any messages to and from the beach or any aircraft or vessels around the platform. You have a sort of sharp end of the communications point of contact, if you like, for the platform to the outside world. Additionally, we monitor all the safety and emergency frequencies in this area. We have uh, the emergency telephone system here. That's throughout the platform. If anyone dials 666, it immediately comes up on the emergency telephone, rings this alarm, makes sure we uh, jump to attention, so to speak. There's also a sick bay alarm for any patients in the, in the sick bay. We monitor that 24 hours. The sick bay is set up basically like a mini resuscitation area, uh, the same as you would have in a casualty unit in any hospital. We have defibrillators, suction machines, intubation equipment, really anything for basic life support. We have a, a beach line directly to our health advisor, the company health advisor, and we can phone them 24 hours a day. We also have a direct line to the hospital if we need to call, call them up for any advice. I'm the camp boss on here, sort of stroke catering manager and I'm in charge of all the catering facilities and the cleaning of the accommodation unit on board Piper. I have a team of chefs and stewards who run the services like laundry services, the catering services and the cleaning of the accommodation. I sort of look at the 14-day the period, I would sort of decide on the food that the people would like themselves, as well as having the obvious, like on Sunday, the roast beef and Yorkshire pudding, etc, etc. I think most of the people um, enjoy the food. There's also, as well as the hot food, there's a salad counter where there's a cold buffet display where people can choose from there too. There's a good atmosphere on the paper. It's uh, friendly. Um, Logged workmates. So, uh, we all get on pretty well together. The leisure facilities are very expensive. It's costing me a lot of Mars bars and Cokes and the snooker table at the moment. Piper is fairly luxurious accommodation. It's uh, a state-of-the-art platform. I enjoy working here, if you have to work at all. I think if you ask anybody on the platform, they will say it's very nice living on Piper Big. Living and working in the small community on Piper Bay is certainly different. Here, 120 miles out in the North Sea, its men and women form a close team in which mutual trust and respect are essential if the job's going to get done. A lot of inspired thinking has gone into the creation of the Piper B Saltire A complex, and its people know that now it's up to them to produce the goods.